Hello all, oh, my name's Mike, uh, nice to be back on YouTube again. So that was the solo that you just heard from um, uh, Toto Live at Poland as far as I know. I'll leave a link in the description. The reason for playing that solo was um, I just recently I've gotten fairly uh, heavily into um, what um, the work of Steve Luke there um, and also to a lesser extent Larry Carlton mainly because um, I'm one of those people who just who moves who moves on from artist to artist I, I get I get really interested in um, the work of, of a of particular artist who, was, who, who you know I may have been aware of but not particularly heavily into sometimes I just I just go over somebody's somebody's stuff just because um, it might be you know worthwhile learning how to play that stuff or whatever I might I might just find I've I'm starting to really enjoy the music that they um, that they've put out and uh, just recently I've started um, putting um, dream theater CDs in in the car because it, because my my normal uh, daytime job is driving from school to school to teach uh, I teach music uh, primarily um, on the ukulele these days funnily enough but well all of my private work is guitar teaching um, and probably two thirds now of my school teaching is, is, is whole class ukulele which is great fun and uh, much much more uh, logistically viable because they're so small so I get the opportunity to spend quite a bit of time sitting in the car all week listening to music um, and a while back I came across uh, a box of CDs uh, that my wife had brought home and one, they were all really old stuff uh, from the 80s and 70s and 90s one of those CDs was, was Asia by Steely Dan which, was, which is a record that I really I didn't know anything from it that I could, that I could glean and it probably after about the 6th the sixth the CD player will hold six CDs so once one's finished it'll just click on to the next one and so so on and um, after about six goes of listening to this to Steely Dan I thought I'm gonna take that out Um, and then I thought well maybe I'll give it another I'll give it another couple of goes as, as I do and uh, and then I started to think this is really really good stuff and Coincidentally, um, I, I was I was watching a couple of Rick Beato videos, and he started talking about the the Royal Scam by Steely Dan. Um, I have not I've never heard of this record. It, years and years ago, we had one Steely Dan greatest hits records that me that my dad brought home one day, and uh, so I'd, and I'd played the first track which was reeling in the years which I really liked, and then I was doing it again. Um, and, and that was about it really uh, Blackjack do it again it's raining in the years Ricky don't lose that number those three songs and I, and I listened to those three songs took the record off put it back in its sleeve and I, I don't really know why I must have at some point listened to the whole the whole record because I've gone back and I've looked at it and Peg's on there there's a couple of tracks from the Royal Scam Um I obviously didn't get that far into it for whatever reason. It mustn't have appealed to me at the time. So um, I, I got hold. Of, I bought. I bought a copy of the Royal Scam on CD. Put it in the car, and it's probably fair to say I was blown away by that one. Um, 
and I looked into that, and it turns out it's Larry Carlton, who's the, the you know the, the guitar player there, playing on those sessions, and uh, and the, the in particular the song "Don't Take Me Alive," which when you think it came out in seventy six, it's quite remarkable that I, that I wasn't aware of it. I was cooking one day last summer, and I played I played I've got Spotify. I played um, the Royal Scam through my Bluetooth speaker while I was cooking and that, that song came on the first time I heard it was uh, that I know of that I can remember um, that song came on and I thought Ooh. it was one of those moments that you get which is uh, it, it sticks in your mind it was a, it was like the first time you heard Jimmy Page playing um, on Song Remains the Same or Richie Blackmore and the early purple stuff I um, so I, I'm, I'm in now, I'm hooked, I'm, and I'm listening to uh, Steely Dan. Uh, and then I become aware of this. I'm reading up about Larry Carlton. And I, the more I read about Larry Carlton, the more I seem to uh, hear about Steve Lukather, who obviously I'd heard of. I, knew, I, know, I know Toto, I know Rosanna, and uh, Hold the Line, um, Africa. Kind of standard uh, classic rock. The, by you know by anybody's standards these days and um, so much so I, I got hold of his book which is which is well worth a read um, it's, it, there's, a, there's a discography in the back it's, un, it's unbelievable the amount of people he's uh, he's been involved with his records he's on Whitney Houston Michael Jackson um, as everyone knows Toto was the band on uh, Jackson's Thriller um, the Tubes, Van Halen, he's got a credit for, Cher, Randy Crawford, Don Henley, Earth, Wind and Fire, The Tubes, I mean Christopher Cross. That's just one, one, one uh, page. Um, I picked out seven or eight random examples. It's just there's pages and pages of, of these credits <laughs> for Luca there. It's just it's just um, it's a body of work to be proud of for any musician. And so I wondered why he was he was um uh why he was why he's so popular to you know for artists to, to give 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 the call to and, and have him put put his stuff down on, on their on their records and um so I bought a, a Toto um C D as well, put that on. I wasn't really all that much into into the kind of um eighties rock that Toto Toto did. And some of it's good. Uh, I mean, Rosanna is absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal as is uh, Africa, and there's a few other good tracks on there. There's just a wealth of of live um, Toto videos on YouTube, and that particular solo that I played, um, just <laughs> I thought that so. I, I thought it was really, really interesting. I thought the solo was brilliant initially. It just blew me away. Thinking now about what what's what's you know what's Luca the God in his arsenal that, that that makes him sound. What what makes him so valuable as a session player and, and you know so. I, I thought what I can do is go get get the the Toto records because it's a two two CD greatest hits and, and I'll go through his solos and then. I, I got bored straight away, not because of Luca there, but just just because. Um, I was I was learning the the Rose Annis solo and and uh, whatever hold the line and and then I, I I made a point of getting onto YouTube and looking at the live videos. Um, so I cut 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 the story short. I had a really good go at learning that solo and um, it's interesting how how Lucas constructs this solo and and I, and I know by watching all the other solos on on when they've played Rosanna. Um, it's just an off the cuff, um, you know. It's he's, he's improvising within within a kind of framework. Um, so I just thought I'd go through what, what he's doing in this solo. So on the on the the, actual, the old Toto um, on the on the original uh, record from uh, eighty three eighty four, does he does this solo at the end? <laughs> So on, um, 
but it, you know if you listen to it it's it's one of those solos it's it's, it's kind of a spontaneous um it's got that bluesy style of a mix it's a mix of lydian um uh, rather than just the blue scale and the pentatonic scale so um this is the kind of this is the point that i'm going to get at the, the, the solo starts with this um so it's kind of a rundown o over a, a g a g chord <laughs> really nice um, country bend and as he bends down on, the, on that B note on, uh, to the A on the 14th fret of the G he comes down again but he plays this chromatic run from the D down to the C on the B string on the 15th, 13th uh, 15th, 14th, 13th fret so you get this and then he does the same thing it does, but he bends up on the uh, 13th fret now so the, the the following scale it's it's dorian it's g dorian and i remember thinking the day that i started doing this <laughs> I've, I've probably cracked it this is what he's doing he's playing um he's playing g dorian the rest of the band's playing this boogie boogie little feet style honky tonk um The next thing after this it just goes into a straightforward blues lick. There you go. And I thought, well, I know he's not using the blues scale all the way through, but I can just I can just feel it. It's it's um it's major blues. As opposed to it, uh, the, it's not the E minor blues, but it's the same notes. Um, so the next thing we get this. So he basically plays a G7 chord. And now I'm thinking, well, that's that's. Um, G7, G, F, E, F, bend up from the A to the B, and play a C, it's a similar thing to, to what happens in the, in the main solo with the, um, um, but he, he adds that, uh, he adds a note, um, a semitone above, so it bends from the A to the B, bends from A to B, and then plays the C. And then we've got a kind of uh, C, B, C, G, F sharp, F, chromatic movement. Luca does this a lot in his solos, I've noticed. So I'm thinking, well, this is... Um, this is Mixolydian now. So, so far, we can get it right, can't we? So, we move on. Classic uh, pentatonic. Straightforward rock kind of thing everyone does. Lovely little bit of country. So now we're now we're in major pentatonic. And then we've got this superb um a kind of I don't know, Billy Gibbons country style. Uh, I don't know, it's just um it always it reminds me of um off um walk this way lovely stuff so we bend from the A to the B on the G string second fret to, to the note on the fourth fret and then 
then we play the G on the third fret of the E string. Bend down a little bit on the G string. Reach over to the B flat on the sixth of the eighth. And then finish off with the B flat on the third of the G and bend up to the B. Lovely stuff. One of those licks that you, that you keep in your arsenal. <laughs> So after this country lick, more more pentatonic, and we just moved up to the to the next position, and then we get this mixolydian um, at the at the uh, so like if we'd be playing over a G seven chord, barred at the, the tenth, just think of an A shape, and you add that seventh note on the third of the E, um, so that's barred at the tenth. And it, it kind of sweeps through that the top half of that chord. And he bends up to the F note from the twelfth on the on the E. So so um we've got Mixolydian again. Uh, it sweeps through that G7 chord. Another chromatic run, A, B flat, B. So it's G, G uh, blues, um, G major blues. With the seventh, so that makes it mixolydian. Um, so this is interesting. So we've gone straight from this mixolydian type bluesy thing. Um, and he plays over an A minor. Moves it into an A minor chord. So that's kind of um, because we're playing over G, and we're adding an A and a C and an E. Um, get this kind of eleventh feel. And then the last, the last mode. This is a style that Lucas has consciously gone for. He's made the decision not to get stuck in that um, pentatonic box. Um, he's going to move around the neck. He's going to move around um, in a way that's that's quite musical, really musically more interesting than, than just uh, conventional. Here we go, pentatonic rock rock style guitar, and uh, it's paid off for him. I'm not saying you need to go and learn all these modes and start throwing them all in, in, into every solo that you do. But it's definitely something um, worth having in, in, in your arsenal. Uh, there's, there's a couple of things about that. Uh, just just to say that a main mode, any given mode, um, just say for instance in G, if you know the G major scale, uh, you know every mode because all all the mode is is a different starting point so in a, in a normal uh, G scale G major we're going up an octave from G to G G, A, B, C, D E, F sharp, G um, so if I was to, to change it so it was um, A Dorian all I'd need to do now is start on the A and play all the same notes of that scale I move to the next the next day an octave higher. So now I've got A B C D E F sharp G A, which it's still G major. Except now instead of um, the place that you, the key the home key being G, it's it kind of it all centres around A minor because the first third in that scale is a minor third, A to C. So if you're playing a song that's that's that goes G A minor for instance
and you'll be using that G, G major scale for your solo you're basically between hopping between A Dorian and G major see so, so you don't have to get bogged down too much with that Forward really. The next, the next mode would be Phrygian, metallic, metallic type, type sound and thing. B C D E F sharp G A. What makes the Lucas the solo kind of unusual is is he's taking every every mode in G, um, and he's moving between those modes. So so like the, the example that I've given is 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 all in G. So so with A Dorian, it's just a, a G G key with a with a different tonal center, a kind of cheat. Luke has stayed in G, so so we've got G, um, G major, we've got G Dorian, um, he uses later on quite a lot, and he. Does that kind of thing, um. G Dorian. I don't think there's a Lydian in. I couldn't find any Lydian. That C sharp probably would have jarred within that boogie woogie um, style. Because we've got the D in that G chord. Um, it's full of mix of Lydian, as, as I said. If you ever start getting bored with you with your playing because you, you're using the pentatonics all the time, switch to to mixolydian. Um, it's easy as you know. Hammer on from the third on the G to the fourth on the G, which gives you that B note. And then you've got the E on the sixth of the B. There's a section in the book where um, look at look at the talks about doing a, a session one day, um, and he's 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 almost ready to go. He's finished, and there's um. Another producer walks in and he said, "I was, I was open to catch you because I want you to throw me a solo down on this." And he says, "What's the?" Um, he says, "I'm going in a couple of minutes. What's the? What's the tempo? What's the key?" So he just he just lays on the uh, throws down the the, the back and track. Um, Luca knows the key now. He knows the feel. Knows the tempo, and just plays an eight bar solo. And the fella says, "Yep, that'll do." And he says, "Let's do another one." Uh, uh, Lucas says, "Let's do another one." And he goes, "Okay." He throws down another one. Thanks very much. That was it. Job done. <laughs> uh, she knows what he's doing. Uh, you you can, as long as you've got a good uh, grasp of of um, some music theory, you do plenty of practice. That kind of level of uh, musicianship is isn't hard to attain. But there's a, I noticed there's a huge contrast between um, Lucas's solo work um, is 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 really dynamic in terms of at one end you can go from you can go from really aggressive um, hard rock right right to right right on this this end to really soft melodic um, really nice feeling uh, music that's that's just 
uh, hits the nail on the head. And then his his his, lead, his rhythm playing, it's it's really it's it's exemplary. And and it's not it's not um, it's totally uncomplicated a lot of the time. So just just take Rosanna for instance. <laughs> The, the drummer from um, Toto, Jeff Picardo, who died, um, he, he laid down a shuffle for um, for the song Rosanna. And basically, he, he, and he, he said himself what he did was he stole the um, the Purdy shuffle. Um, the, I can't remember which song, which Steely Dan song it was on. Um, and also from uh, John Bonham's um, shuffle on, on Fool in the Rain. He took those those two, those, those kind of, that style of... And he added the Bo Diddley rhythm on the on the bass drum. Um, talking about talking about patting your head and rubbing your belly at the same time. But um, so we've got this on the bass drum. We've got boom, 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 bam, bam, boom, 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 bam, bam. <laughs> Toto recorded Rosanna. It it must have been tempting for Luca to Luca to, to think of something to complement that. It just plays. He just plays exactly that. All I wanna do when I wake up in the morning is see you rise, Rosanna, Rosanna. Never thought that a girl like you would ever care for me. Rosanna Really nice uncluttered um rhythm playing. Um and the the just, just that proper dynamic um contrast when with the um where Bobby Kimball comes in with uh, singing in a much higher register. Uh Lucas is a really good singer as well, I should say. So he's got everything. <laughs> and um, so that's my video. I'd, there's probably more I could say about this. Um I was tempted to, to take take a few more solos on board and, and, and analyse those too, but with that, that uh, Rosanna solo having so much in it, I bear in mind that I've only played maybe the first, um, the first, at least probably the first quarter of the solo. Um, you know, there's a lot more material in there, but it got it got it got difficult to. Um, transcribe what was going on because later on the, the sound quality is not quite as um not quite wasn't quite good enough for, for to catch all the notes that he's playing and uh, it gave me a headache trying to listen to it trying to break down when i had that just slow down the uh the track um well as i say that that, that solo was absolutely full of um full of material so i thought that, that that's good enough that's enough there for the, for the um you know for the video um so that's that folks um hopefully i won't have as much time between uh videos as i have lately it's not always possible to sit down and have the time with the time to make a youtube uh get all your gear out and um uh make a video so hopefully i'll have a bit more time over the next couple of months to make some good videos I'll see you then.